This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm Alright Hey, and this is High Scrollers, the podcast version of your favourite group chat. If it's trending, going viral or has you gripped, we're talking about it. Coming up on this episode, we think we've made a discovery of where all the celebrities' kids go to school and we talk a little bit about it. Plus, one of my favourite topics to talk about, conspiracy theories. If you know, you know, it's going to be a big episode. There's a lot to say, there's a lot of conspiracy theories to talk about and it's very chaotic. I've made some big changes in my life recently. Am I going through a mid to quarter life crisis? Or am I simply just opening a new chapter? Ooh, plus we plan our funerals and don't worry, it's not as morbid as it sounds. Uh, We had a lot of fun. It was probably one of the funniest conversations we've had in quite a while. So stick around for that to see what's going to go down when we die. (laughs) Deal me in, doll. Let's go. Well, well, well. (laughs) Why did you just start the podcast like an evil witch? Well, 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 my children. What are we doing today? (sighs) We're raw dogging the podcast, that's for sure. We're raw dogging our episode today. Do we want to explain how we got here? Because usually on a Sunday night, Mm -hmm. I take a couple hours to quickly fill out our little brief, which you hardly even look at when we record anyway. No, I raw dog everything. (laughs) (laughs) Not only just this podcast, but life. So it makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, you haven't written down your usual notes. No, and I I think we're just two very different people when it comes to this sort of thing. Like I need some strategy of where we're going. All of the jokes and things that we say and the tangents that we go on, they're pretty like off the cuff. For the most part, like to lift the curtain a little bit on how this works, we might just have like the topic that we are going to talk about, like that's been on the internet trending or in the news. And then we might know where we want to take it, but That's just one tangent of 12 that we seem to go on. Mm -hmm. Today, we just haven't written anything down because last night we had a chat. Both our brains were switched off. But I think that'll make for a great episode. Like This could be our best episode yet. Mm, Doubt it. Stick around and you'll find out whether that's the case or not. There's been lots of changes this week anyway in our own worlds because you've been through some changes this week, honey. Yeah, I've chopped my hair off. Mm -hmm. Which looks 10 out of 10. Thanks. Incredible. I was like don't know if it's going to work, short hair on you, not sure, (laughs) but you've done it. And I'm like, wow, it's I'm actually impressed too. Like I actually like it more more than I thought. As you know, cutting your hair into a bob, or maybe not as you know, (laughs) but you know, it's a big deal when someone chops their hair off. And I feel like we've seen a lot of people over the years chop their hair off. And especially if you share it online, there's always people going, nah, long suited you better. Like I think that was one of my (laughs) biggest fears. Everyone's saying, no, it doesn't suit you. But I was blown away. I've never got so many comments and DMs in my life saying, oh, my God, it looks amazing. So I'm really glad I did it. And I've been pondering on the idea of doing the blunt chop for so long. But just too scared, you know. For what? It grows back. But I think it's here to stay. So they say a woman who um, cuts her hair is about to change her life. Oh, really? Yep. So look out. (laughs) What else could go wrong (laughs) at this point? Seriously. (laughs) As always, let's kick off this episode with our Royal Flushes of the Week, which is the best thing that we saw on the internet Mm. in the last week. Do you have one this week? Yes, except that we, you know, well, you break the rules quite a bit on this podcast and you've done things that you didn't enjoy seeing. Oh. Um, I'm taking it a step in between and just saying I saw this reel and it got me thinking. Okay. You know, like that's where I'm at. You learn a lot of things from yours. I didn't haven't learned anything from this, but I thought it would be a good conversation starter because I saw this video and it made me feel some type of way. So I'm just going to play you the video. It is from the podcast. I've had it podcast. Okay. Have you seen those two ladies who just complain about everything? Yes. Like anything and everything, but it's so Is funny. that the whole thing? Like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. known for just complaining? Well, yeah, the podcast is called I've had it. Cause they've like, right. I've had it with this and I've had it with that and I've had it. So they've had it with something. 
And um, I do enjoy the podcast and I do watch a lot of their social videos. So it is entertaining, but this one struck a bit of a chord with me. Have a listen. I have found in my life that people who tell me how busy they are all the time when if you were to break it down they don't have jack shit going on <laughs> these are the faux busy braggers do you feel attacked matt <laughs> are they talking about you <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> to be fair you do always say that you're really busy okay here's the thing it made me feel some type of way because because you're guilty <laughs> no, 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 no. But I saw that and I was like, yeah, that's so true. Those people exist. But now I'm having a panic attack that people will think that that's me. And you've literally just said that. Yep. So now I'm about to cry <laughs> because I am that person who just leaves everything out. I've been so busy. Like, I'm just so busy. Like, I'm busy. Like, I've got so much going on. The biggest thing for me is as soon as someone says, what have you been up to? <laughs> Oh You're God. fucking outing yourself so bad I right now. No but I don't idea. when I hear that and I think of you. I'm so sorry. But I will say like every I see you every Monday you're like, "Oh, I've been so busy." <laughs> but you never are saying it in like a bad way. But you're always busy. But I am always busy. <laughs> Doing what? Okay, like but here's the thing, let me get to <laughs> Doing what? Give us five examples. Let me get to that, okay? So my thing is like I feel like so at events and stuff like that, that's the default that people go to. The question is, what have you been up to? Yeah. First of all, I'm fucking tired. I can't be bothered telling you what I'm up to. Half <laughs> the things that I'm up to, I can't actually tell you because they're embargo, embargo, embargo. And I'm working on the behind the scenes and I'm not going to talk. And also I know that if they say, what have you been up to? And then I go, you know, for example, oh, like I don't want follow-up questions. Right. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm working on my 2024 live shows. Oh, wow. What's the call? When are you doing it? What are the dates? Where are you going? What are you then doing? Mm. I'm like... I can't be bothered telling you everything about my life. In, qu in fact, I like being mysterious. I'm okay. just going to keep it out. I'm really busy. But one thing that I've defaulted to doing recently is saying when someone goes, what have you been up to? I go, oh, I don't even know. I've been so busy. They go, doing what? And I'm like, oh, it's one of those things where, like, I just am so busy. But then you ask me what I've done and I literally don't have an answer. <laughs> See, and I always just say, oh, just honestly working. Yeah, like, that's okay. my go-to. Yeah. I don't feel like I ever say I'm busy, even though I probably am. I say, I've just been working. Like, what have you been up to lately? Just work and just the usual. Yeah, right. Okay. Like, so when I, I get my hair done or nails done, like, what have you been doing? I've just been working. Also, I was up on the Central Coast last night. One of my friends had their son's baptism. She's just had a baby a few months ago and they had a baptism. Mm -hmm. First time in a church in a real long time. It was stunning. <laughs> had the stained glass windows and all. It was good. They are actually really beautiful. Yeah. But anyway, my, one of my other friends was asking me what I'd been up to. And I said the whole, I'm busy, you know, but I, you know, it's one of those things you can't, I, I can't tell you what I've done, but I'm really busy. And she goes, oh, okay, well, what do you got coming up this week? And another thing about me is I don't think to the future. Like I'm right. like each day I'm looking at what I'm doing the night before and I'm like, right, we're just taking it one day at a time because I'm so busy. Oh, yeah, you're so busy. <laughs> I don't have the brain real estate to be dealing with all of that, honey. So I literally have now defaulted to also getting my calendar out and, and taking people through it. So you just asked me, what have I been up to? Yep. Well, let's discuss, shall we? So we'll go from <laughs> last Monday. So last Monday we had the podcast record. Yep. Then I had a lunch meeting at that cafe just oh, over yep. there. Then I had to, <laughs> this is so boring. I'll just say I had admin to do. I had to film two campaigns, post one campaign. The next morning I had an event for Tanya Hennessy's new makeup line. I then had another lunch, but that was just a casual lunch. <laughs> Stop. You are a lady of leisure. <laughs> <laughs> then I had three afternoon meetings. And See, that's of, a bit busy. Yeah, and one of them was about the live show, so that's good. The next day was a full day of nailing down the live show, the name, which I've settled on. <gasps> and Can you tell me later? It's a High Scrollers Easter egg. Oh. The name of the show. Oh, I'm in my Easter egg era. I'm in my Taylor Swift era. Like, I just, like, love dropping hints. So there's a High Scrollers Easter egg. I have dropped the name of the show Where? quite a few times throughout this podcast because I knew that I was going to name it this for a few months. Right. And now I've named my new show next year this name. Follow the Yellow Brick Road. It's not Follow the Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> that's, that's your own first and only clue. It's not Follow the Yellow Brick Road. What was the clue? 
clue. You didn't say anything. There's no clue. That's your only clue. There's no, oh. it's not follow the yellow brick road. Okay, but I'm there's have something to about the podcast. Also, the name of the show is not Shaz. Okay. But there's something <laughs> we've mentioned a few times. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say. You can figure it out. First person to figure it out gets a prize. Um, Who, then I if another... someone figures it out, they should get a free ticket to one of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then, um, yeah, that was Wednesday. We're only on Wednesday. I feel like it's very busy. Two oh, more so meetings. Busy. Then another post I had to put up. Then I had another meeting. Friday was the day that I had done everything the day before. So even though in my calendar there's only three meetings, like I got so much done on Thursday because I just did so much work. Friday was the day that I did a little bit and then we did... Black Friday. I work on weekends too, baby. Saturday, oh. we ha- I have a new business venture, which uh, I had a whip for. And then Sunday, I had the baptism yesterday. So that was a social day. I'm busy is what I'm saying. Yeah, you are. Does that sound busy to you? It does when you say it like but that. But my thing is when someone asks me what I'm doing, You're I'm not, not going to read that out. read all of that out and go, oh, I had seven meetings this week. I had to do this many things. Like I just go, I'm busy like, and I'm over it. <laughs> Maybe you need to start saying I've just been working. Yeah, I think that's a good Instead way. Instead of busy, because I feel like what those ladies are saying in that video is people that say they're busy, it can oftentimes come across as like in a negative way. Mm. Not like, oh, I've been so busy. It's been great. It's Mm. usually portrayed as like, oh, I'm so busy. Like it's a bad thing. So maybe you need to use a different word. Yeah. Just been working. Yeah. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. I also want to say just to (laughs) To defend yourself. Yeah. Last week was a slow week. All right. (laughs) There are slow weeks and there are there are fast weeks in this career, okay? Like, yeah. I have to stop asking how people are at a funeral. It's just my default. I just keep going, I go, hey, how, how are, are you? you? They're like, oh, Sad. you know. <laughs> or like, and then I tried to switch it up and say, good to see you. And then they go, yeah, I wish it was under better circumstances. I'm like, all right, we get it. We're at a funeral, but can we just lighten up people, you know? Speaking of funerals, just randomly, (laughs) I want to plan my funeral out like when I'm young now because I want my funeral to be like memorable and fun. Yeah. Like I want people to, like I know funerals are obviously not fun. Do you have your plan yet? No, I want to write it out. But, like, I want people to show up. Like, I know a lot of people already do, like, wear colours, like, don't wear black, like, yeah. try not to be sad. And I feel like more and more people do this now. Like, for example, I talk to my nan all the time about her funeral because she always talks about it and she always goes, I'm not going to be here forever. You know, we might not be here by next Christmas. I'm like, stop fucking saying that. But nan, for example, it's already all booked, you know, and she's picked mm-hmm. out all her flowers and everything. She's even picked out her song my heart will go on or like Celine Dion or it's something it's no, or maybe even hallelujah. I don't know. I think it'd be hallelujah. I don't know if my heart will go on. I don't know. But anyway, she told me years ago that I I picked my song. This is my song. And it's the saddest fucking song. Like it's a sad song on a normal day. When you're at your nan's funeral, that song's going to be 10 times more sad. And I'm like, nan, why do you want that to be your fucking funeral song? Like we're already going to be sad enough as it is. Why do you have to throw that in? And I said, I'm telling the funeral ladies we're not fucking playing that song. Oh, you can't do that. That's your nan's darn wish, love. But it's not her favourite song. Like, I swear she's just picked it to make us even more sad because you'll probably (laughs) fucking love knowing that we're all there crying over her. Anyway, so I'm, like, thinking about my funeral. Yeah. I want it to be fun, like a party. I want it to be fun songs and just fun memories. And I feel like we're also lucky for living in this generation now where we have so many videos of everything. Like, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of older people, we don't have so many videos of them. So it's often just like one photo up the front and yeah. it's really sad and morbid. Like I want it to be like a slideshow of my life and all the fun things and a celebration. Of course, it's still going to be sad no matter what, but I want it to be like a fun celebration of life. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about your funeral? (laughs) Yes, I have. I think about everything. Yeah. I want a maypole. I want everyone to be holding a ribbon, dancing around the maypole. My, we will have a service first and then it's a celebration. Yes. So serious little service. All I want is like a couple of people to say a few words, keep it funny, like a, like a um, maid of honor speech. You know, I want it to be upbeat and a bit, make them laugh, you know. And then um, I'll be buried. Don't want to be cremated. Just want to be buried. I know, controversial, controversial. Would you be buried? I'll be dead. So I couldn't care less. The you know, Shaz always is- says to me, just chuck me in the river. Like <laughs> Shaz goes, I don't give a shit. Just chuck me in the river. We've got a river at the back of our warehouse. She's like, just spray me in there. 
<laughs> she always says it. No. Yeah, Cass. she always no. says she says, I don't give a fuck, just throw me <laughs> into the ocean. <laughs> Also, the other thing is, like, I like to be buried, and as I am lowered into the ground, I want the circle of life from the Lion King oh. to play. I think that's quite camp. Like, the, yeah. the coffin starts going down, and you're just here. No, no, body, you know, I, I imagine the moment. I've got chills. I've got goosebumps, actually. Imagine. Is the there moment. a performance happening up the top of any from kind? From the day we arrived. On, on this planet. planet. Yeah, and all of the animals from the Lion King, the Broadway musical, you know, they've got the elephant oh, the people yeah, dressed yeah. up. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll be there. They're coming in, you know, everything's happening. <sighs> I've got the people with the birds on their hats <laughs> flinging around. And then at the end... <laughs> what happens at the end? This moment with Simba, you know, how can we utilise the moment with Simba where you... where So maybe someone gets me out of the coffin and holds me <laughs> up. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm kidding. I'm joking. No, I literally do want to be lowered to Circle of Life. Then I want Maypole. I want like little um bake sale, like lots of nice little What, like stalls? Yeah. <laughs> like it's a, a fate, fair. A fate of all right pay. Hey, all right, fate. You know, like And can oh, be sponsored by Fate the Label. Oh, Perfect. Like we'll yeah. start planning that now. So yeah, I definitely want something fun. A couple confetti cannons wouldn't go astray. Maybe a disco ball. But why not I say, like, why do funerals have to be so morbid? Mm. I get they're sad and like they're always gonna be sad. Yeah. It, but even if we're having these fun funerals, people can cry through their happiness and laughter. <laughs> I'm just thinking everyone's sitting down crying over me and then the lights go out and I've booked without anyone knowing a fucking drag queen ensemble I to walk it. down the aisle and get everyone pumped up and everyone's bawling their <laughs> eyes out and they're like singing a really insensitive song for a <laughs> funeral like, I will survive. <gasps> <laughs> Stand alive. Stand alive. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Like, why does it have to be so serious oh and boring? Oh my gosh. Anyway, touch wood, we don't die soon. <laughs> I think we're still on Royal Flash of the Week, so it's, uh, do you need a refresh, scrollers, on what that is? Because we went so off tangent there. But anyway, what is your Royal Flash of the Week, please? I've been so busy the last week. <laughs> I don't really like using that word. Your calendar out? I haven't spent all that much time on my usual apps, but what I have spent some time on is Reddit. I feel like Reddit is that one social app that I can spend time on and I don't feel guilty about it compared to if I spend two hours on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I'm going through Reddit, like I'm actually learning something or reading something interesting compared to just like watching videos that are numbing my brain. Yeah. And last night I was just laying in bed reading through a Reddit post. Now, the best thing about Reddit is reading the comments. Like you go to the post and then you always go straight to the comments because that's where it all is. I feel like this is something that you're going to love, Matt, because I know you love a conspiracy theory. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. We'll be here all day. (laughs) Well, lucky we've got nothing else to talk about after this, so this can take up a good 10 minutes. So the Reddit post is, what conspiracy theory do you believe is 100% true? Okay. So that's the question that they've put out to Reddit. And then I went into the comments. It was just reading all of these conspiracies that people have. So how about I'll read some of the answers out to you and you can tell me whether you believe that conspiracy or not. Okay, sure, sure. Crazy celebrity baby names are just professional names. Their real names are much more typical and kept secret so that they can have a normal life. No, no, I don't think that's true. You think they I all think just... the name's the name because who's got a weird name? Like Angelina Jolie's got a baby named Apple or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who is it actually, Che? Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> sorry, has Apple, right? But I don't reckon Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter's just whirling to school under the name Sarah. Like, I think her name's Apple. But, like, for me, I think when people name their kids crazy things, like, it's probably a topic of conversation for two weeks at school mm. and then everyone just accepts the fact. Also, kids in kindergarten don't even know, like, what's going on. So they just probably don't even realise the name Apple. It's more like when she gets to McDonald's or she gets a job when she's 14 years old. That's probably when people go, Apple. I'll tell you what's weird as well about, like, um, celebrities having kids. Like when you think of celebrities' kids, I automatically think of the Kardashians and all their kids. They actually go to a school, North and all that. Like they go to this one school in LA or wherever it is Mm -hmm. that like is for, I think it's for like celebrities' kids. 
But I just can't picture them like because their lifestyle is like nothing else. Like you're the daughter of the Kardashians. I can't picture them just going to a school and doing normal shit. Yeah. Like all I picture them doing is having like extravagant birthday parties. It's cost a million dollars to have your seventh birthday party. <laughs> How are they going from that to going and sitting in a fucking classroom? But also like is Kim Kardashian having to write a permission slip yeah. for North to go on an excursion. But how can she even go on an excursion? <laughs> like, to me, I yeah, think true. surely even when they're young, they, they're going to this school, even if there is other celebrities' kids there, or may, like surely there's normal normal kids there too, like everyday kids. Yeah. Like how is Kim Kardashian's daughter going to school and not being treated completely different? Or do kids not give a shit about that kind of stuff? I don't know, but are you sure that North is going to school? Yes, I've seen her in a school uniform. Oh, okay. They literally have uniforms and everything. Because if I was Kim, I'd just pay for someone to come and teach my kid at home. You'd almost think that, but then it's like does sending them to school give them that little bit of sense of what is normal and regular yeah, life? But also I think going from an extreme of living in a – billion dollar mansion to going to school that's got to like mess with your head as a kid yeah but is the billion dollar is it a billion dollar school as well probably well look it up there's this one school in la i can't i don't remember. think they're sitting in a demountable with no air con love <laughs> like i was in primary oh, school one but... <laughs> time in a demountable i jammed my fingers in the door so Ooh, bad blood blisters yes yeah and mum was working in the canteen that day another kid on the inside of the demountable slammed it shut <laughs> And then I just quickly opened it and I remember I ran across the, like, outside, across the field into mum and like, my fingers. Oh, my gosh. Painful. How good was it when your mum would work at the canteen? You know, oh. you, know what? you know when you got to year six, we actually got to work in the canteen as well. Oh, really? But we do canteen prep. Oh, so yeah. So the parents would take the money and stuff, but we would... No, I'm pretty sure we took the money as well. I think they just cut costs and fired the parents and made us work for free. But I remember we would be in the canteen and I used to love it because I'd be like, cheese toasty for you, cheese toasty for me. See, I I genuinely thought that when our parents worked in the canteen that everything was free. Like, you know, you'd go up and be like, my mum's running in the canteen today. (laughs) Mum, can I have this, this, this and order the whole canteen and think that I was just getting it for nothing? Poor Shaz was having to fork out for it. Also, I know there's such thing as inflation, but I'd love to know how much, if any scrollers are parents who have to do a lunch order, can you like tell me, like DM me on Instagram. Or school teachers. Like how much is a lunch order? Because I remember like back when I was in primary school, a dollar to three dollars, depending on what I got. And that would get me a hot dog. A a milk. A milk. (laughs) And a side of some sort, like an ice block as well, and you get a little token to go get the ice block because when the lunch order came, it would be warm, so you wouldn't want the ice block in it. <laughs> oh, I miss primary school. And that would honestly be like $2.50 or something. Then I remember when my little brothers and sisters were in high school, my stepmom would send them with a lunch order, not very often, but I remember being like, oh, my gosh, it costs $7 these days. I'm God. sure it's even more now. Now I don't want to know how much it is. So I need to know, like, what would it cost if I wanted, like, a hot dog or a pie or a sausage roll and then a drink and a side? How much <laughs> is that setting you back? Because at this rate, I'm thinking 55 50 <laughs> So back to the Kardashian school. They may as well call it the Kardashian school. Yeah. What, what what have we got, Che? So before we get into this, I have to say, someone messaged me the other day on Instagram, slid into my DMs and was like, are you Google girl? <laughs> Google girl? I was like, Because I say, go Google girl. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? What do you mean? It's a and I was like, Kim reference, but oh. every time Shay has to Google something, I go, go Google girl. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Kardashian put up a thing saying um, spring break is over and she posted the girls wearing their school uniform. So people have like looked at the uniform and gone, I need to find out where that is and apparently it's a place called sierra canyon school yeah. where a lot of celebrity kids go because they have the solid gray and blue dress but they also have a khaki or navy version so i feel like that's very kardashian of them to be like mm, you've got, got our own yeah so sierra canyon school is where it's been narrowed down to Wow, I wonder if it is exclusively for celebrities' kids or if it's a mix. It's a private school, surely. Well, apparently, Kendall and Kylie Jenner also went to Sierra Canyon. Yeah. So wow, it's expensive, girl. There you go. Tuition runs between twenty-seven thousand and thirty-six thousand, depending on the grade. That's not that much. Is for that? them, that's spare change. Yeah, literally, pocket yeah. money. <laughs> Can you look up at the most expensive Australian school? Go Google, girl, <laughs> and see what 
the tuition compares forty three thousand dollars a year. Yep. Well, I mean, I know that was probably in America in the last one, but that's on average Geelong Grammar School. Any scrollers went there? You're as good as Kim Kardashian's kids, apparently. <laughs> in the Sydney Church of England Grammar Girls School. Grammar School, oh, yeah. forty two thousand one hundred and twenty. And I mean, this might be an old uh, article. article too. So I mean, inflation. <laughs> it's probably a hundred thousand yeah, dollars a year. So here's the thing: I went real randomly. I went really hard in year eleven. Um, and year 10 for the school certificate. Year 10, I went really hard on studying, got a good grade. Year 11, I went really hard on studying, like almost too hard, like shut myself down because all my friends I think were turning 18 and I didn't turn 18 till the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So they were all going out and I was like, I have no friends, so I'm just going to study. And so I was going full steam ahead. And by the time I got to the HSC, I was like, I'm too worn out to study. I can't be bothered. And then like six weeks before the HSC, I was like, I want to be a speech pathologist. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm destined to do in life. And then I realized that because I had given up, no matter what score I got in the HSC, I would never get an ATAR even close to what, you needed what I to. needed to be a speech pathologist. And so I had to give up that dream that only lasted three days anyway. <laughs> and um, failed the HSC. Well, you can't <laughs> fail the HSC, they say. You can't fail. But like, I didn't get a dot. But, like, any lower, and I probably would have got a dot. There you go. You know when they give you a dot if your mark's too low? They don't want to offend you. They just go, we'll just give you a dot. I dropped out before I even got there, so. Oh, oh really? You <laughs> yeah. did too? Yeah. All right, what other conspiracy theories do you have? Sorry, this is going to be a long segment. <laughs> Things aren't made to last anymore, and the companies want you to keep buying more of their product by making them intentionally worse. Um, I mean, for some companies, sure. For others, I don't think so. What do you think about, like, you know how they say after a few years your phone starts dying and the battery doesn't charge as good anymore. Like why can they not invent better technology? You know how like our old Nokia lasts for like two weeks? Two weeks? Like battery life. Oh, right, right, right. Well, they're doing a lot more than the Nokia. The Nokia yeah. just had a <laughs> one screen to do that was like a one centimetre by one centimetre. But now we have a whole computer on our phone. I don't have a problem with my battery and never have because... I also don't have, I currently have a case on my phone at the moment because I randomly popped this on the other day and I love it. Mm. But I didn't have a case on my phone for two years and not even a screen protector. And I've dropped it so many times mm. and it's never smashed. And the battery I've always used low power mode. Me too. Always low, use low power mode. And it, I think it saves my battery forever and ever. I've been up since eight o'clock and I'm on 96%. And it's been off the charge since 8 o'clock. It's 11.50 and I'm at 96%. What iPhone do you have? Uh, it's a 12 Pro. I've got a 12 Pro as well. See, mine's on 58% already. I feel like my battery's shit. And I drove for two hours. And Were you charging the whole time? No. Actually, that's a good point. I didn't use maps to get here today. So that's probably why I have so much. Okay. Anyway, no. battery saver helps, I reckon. The whole microchips implanted in bodies thing. Have you heard about that? No. Like one day they're going to put a microchip oh, in yeah. our bodies and whatever. They said it was in the vaccines. <laughs> The whole microchips implanted in bodies thing is just a smoke screen to distract us from the fact that cell phones literally do all of those things conspiracy theorists like to spout. Yeah, well, I somewhat agree because that was the whole thing when people were going on about the vaccine, having they're going to know why why do you need all this information? They're putting chips in me. They're going to get this, this. And I remember saying, the government knows, babe. Mm -hmm. You can't hide anything. Like even if you're off grid these days, they know exactly where you are. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I am so in agreement with that one. You've logged on to Facebook to write your anti-vax story. By doing that. You're putting it out there. <laughs> all the things you've already just said the problem is going to come from, you're doing. That made no sense. But you're in if you know, you know. And if you don't, you don't. And if you don't, I don't care. What about this one? Angelica from the Rugrats mm -hmm. is crazy and the Rugrats don't exist. I don't think so. <laughs> Neither. I just thought I'll screenshot that for fun. <laughs> that fine art is just a big scam used to launder money and avoid tax. Yeah, well, it can, but not always. I mean, I wouldn't call fine art a scam, but I know the scam they're talking about. Yeah. Don't quote me on it, but this is how I feel like it works. A billionaire wants to get a tax deduction, mm -hmm. so somebody... What, he purchases expensive art? No, but I think he purchases it for like $500, let's say, then donates it. 
as a piece of art to like, let's say a museum mm. and maybe it's, he says it's worth $3 million. And then because he's donated a piece worth $3 million, it's now a tax write-off because it's a donation. And so it's a $3 million tax write-off. I don't really know. So interesting. But I think that's the scam. But you know what? I have a conspiracy theory of my own that I'm pretty sure I made up and I can't get anyone on board. Okay. Like no one wants to come on board with me. No, no one, one agrees with that, you. No one agrees with me. But my conspiracy theory is that museums are fake. What? Museums are fake. The things in them aren't the real things. Aren't the real things. That could very well be true. Exactly. Thank you. Someone finally on board with me. <laughs> like uh, my whole thing is like when the Egypt thing comes out and all the Egyptian, you know, they bring an Egyptian exhibit to the museum. You reckon it's not And the it's original. like here lies Tutankhamun. I go bullshit. As if someone's done paper mache on that mummy and that's a fake mummy. That's not the real, you can't tell me that's the real Tutankhamun that we've just decided we're going to dig up. We're going to open him up. Smelly, rotten old thing. He's going to get picked up out of the box and into a glass box for us to all look at in a museum in Sydney. Bullshit. (laughs) You've got a valid point. Exactly. And then let's go further. I reckon the Mona Lisa ain't the real Mona Lisa. I reckon the real Mona Lisa is probably down in an archive underneath the museum. Maybe it could even be hanging in Elon Musk's house and we wouldn't even know. (laughs) We wouldn't even know because he's got enough money to do that sort of shit. And if you've watched Knives Out 2, they have the real Mona Lisa in the house. Well, that they're staying in and the one in the Louvre is fake. Now, they must have heard my theory about that because (laughs) my thing is I think it's too dangerous to have the real thing in the Louvre. And if anyone ever stole the one in the Louvre, it would just be replaced in an instant. The other thing as well is restoration. Bullshit. You're just getting a new one. The old one's faded. It's gone in the bin. Here's a brand (laughs) new one. Who got it? It's all done. There are so many aspects to this. I could do a whole episode I'm on with it. you on it. I reckon yeah. that's very true. Like, yeah. why does it have to be the real one? And I don't mean it for everything. When I was in America, I went to a, a like, the national, you know, where Night at the Museum is filmed or mm. wherever it is. It was some sort of thing. I remember seeing um, Dorothy's slippers from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and I was like, okay, obviously the slippers are real. Like, yeah. I don't believe, I don't believe that the slippers are a fake set of slippers. Like the costume. Muhammad are real. Ali's boxing gloves were there. I'm sure they're real. Yeah. But I'm talking about the artifacts like that are real, like hard to obtain or once in a lifetime things. Like, I'm sure that if Muhammad Ali's boxing gloves got lost in a fire, there's going to be a few people upset about it, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Imagine there's a fire at the museum that has Tutankhamun laying in it. <laughs> I think that would cause some real, it would stir the pot of the world if Tutankhamun's flown over, landed in Sydney, and then Sydney's museum burns down and Tutankhamun's gone. So t- to protect that, I think that's fake. And it's paper mache. Well, yeah. I could make that in my own home. I'll make it this week. I'm so busy, but I'll make it this week and I'm bringing it in next week for you. <laughs> and I'll show you. You know, dinosaur bones as well. Like dinosaur bones is another big one. I go. I love how passionate about this you are. I don't because it's, seriously, it's, I lay awake at night thinking about this. Dinosaur bones is the other one. You cannot tell because, you know, that sometimes they're just sitting out in the open and stuff. I'm like. You're telling me people could, and yes, they're behind little velvet ropes. Why is no one pushing it over or ripping the art off the wall? Yeah, but my thing is like even the velvet ropes there, but if you, it's too much of a risk. If this is like a dinosaur bone and dinosaurs aren't around and I don't think they're coming back anytime soon, I'd love for that. I would honestly (laughs) die for dinosaurs to come back. Why? You want to look out the window here and see a fucking T-Rex ripping through? A T-Rex maybe not, but a brontosaurus wouldn't be bad, you know, like (laughs) Stomping down the city. They are gorgeous animals, thank you. (laughs) But the point is, like dinosaur bones, we only have a limited amount of them. We only have what we've found and like they're perishable as well. Like you touch them too many times, you put the oils from your fingers on it, they're disintegrating, things like that. So I'm like, (laughs) again... Is that bone in front of me the bone from a T-Rex or is that polystyrene that someone with a great arts degree has gone and done some shading on to make it look realistic? That's a very valid conspiracy, Because Matt. I'm thinking the real dinosaur bones, they're getting kept somewhere out of the view of the public and it's everything in a museum is fake, almost everything. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Thank you. You're the first person to, like, get on board. Everyone else just goes, you are so dumb. Oh. Che, I'd like to ring you in, please. 
it makes a lot of sense to not have the real thing there. The Mona Lisa, I'm 100% on board with because people are gluing their hands to it. Yeah. They can't restore that. The other thing we haven't spoken about as well is the transportation. So say, let's say the Mona Lisa was coming to Australia and was going to be in the museum. This would never happen probably, but let's just say. There's no way they would risk putting the Mona Lisa on a flight that could crash or a ship that could sink. Mm. Would they? (laughs) They wouldn't do it. You wouldn't be doing it. But even if it did... They, if if it sunk, they'd just paint another one. They're not bringing the and Mona the Lisa thing. over on the Titanic. That's, that's the, <laughs> no, but that's the thing. It could be overrun by pirates or anything. And this is the thing. Here's the other kicker of the conspiracy theory. So say you did want to put it on a ship because in case the plane was going to crash. So what would happen was they put the Mona Lisa on the ship, but it's a fake one. It's coming to Australia. The ship shinks. The ship shinks. <laughs> the ship sinks. Sorry, I'm just so passionate about this. I can't the even The ship shinks. The ship sinks. No one knows because this wasn't public knowledge. Mm. And thankfully it was a fake anyway. So out comes another fake and they bring that over to Australia instead in a plane. The plane crashes. God forbid. Oh my gosh, it's a terrible time trying to get the Mona Lisa here, but let's just go along with the scenario. Again, the world doesn't know because they wouldn't tell the world that they were bringing the Mona Lisa over because that in itself would be a security risk. Very true. And so here we are full circle. Now replace Mona Lisa with Tutankhamen. And what do you got? A conspiracy theory and a half, Joel. I'll tell you that much. On Friday, I woke up and for some reason I got everything done that I needed to do really quickly because I actually, oh, here's a thing, here's a thing for you. So I spoke about this in my broadcast channel, which, by the way, just an update for you. How's that going, by the way? I do forget about it, but I jump in there every so often and I'm sending voice notes. Oh, yeah, it's personal. Yeah, Personal little voice note, just something that I tell them that I don't tell anyone else. Anyway, I was telling my broadcast channel uh, that if, the, you know the feature on your iPhone that's like you've got do not disturb, you've got sleep, but then you've got personal and work? I have never turned on any of these features in my life. But, really? yes, I know about them. Okay, so I haven't used personal or work before. I use sleep every night. Mm. It's great. I highly recommend. Is that when you, like if I sent you a text and it's like you have do not disturb on, but you can choose to like alert you anyway? Yeah, no, I don't alert anyone. But yeah, I but just, it's that feature, right? Yeah, it just turns on every night at 10.30 and yeah. like I won't get a single notification. And if you try and call me, it's not coming through. Like, But then from our end, can't we choose to, like, I think it says, like, all right, hey, has do not disturb on, notify anyway. Yeah. You can cut through it. Oh, really? Yeah. I have seen that and I do that to my friends too. I go, as if you're putting me on do not disturb, <laughs> notify anyway for sure. But I don't know. I've never really got, I don't think it works. I think that's just more for the person who's saying notify anyway because ah. I don't think it's notified me before. Yeah, I've, I've never tried these things. Unless my friends are just courteous to my requests, <laughs> not doing it to me. But anyway, I set up personal and work focus. So in personal, you can offload all your apps that are work related and they won't be able to send your notifications. So the big one for me is my Gmail and my emails and then vice versa in work. Obviously, I'm putting the Gmail in, but on my personal apps, they cannot send me notifications. Mm-hmm. And so Thursday, I put my work focus on for the first time. Honey, I've never got so much work done in my life because ah. no one could distract me all day. It was an absolute miracle. And so Friday I was like, oh, I've kind of got everything done now. Just tied a few loose ends and then was like, oh, I've got nothing to do. Might just go to the shops. I never go to the shops, Brittany. Never go to the shops. No. I, except to do the groceries. I'm not a shopper. Like and an also, in-person shopper. Yeah, I'm like an online shopper. Yeah. Can't be bothered. <laughs> but I thought Friday, let's go to the shops. Let's do it. And so I rock up to Westfield. Forgetting that it's Black Friday oh. and there's traffic controllers doing the car park. They've got batons, light up sticks. They're telling me to go this way, that way. There's traffic cones out. It's a big show. I got there and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Black Friday. I've made a terrible mistake, but we're here now. We're in the car park. We're just going to push through it. I got inside. It was a ghost town. Lots of staff on, <laughs> expecting lots of sale, like lots of customers. Yep. Standing around doing nothing. Like the minute I'd walk into a store, they're like, hey! Oh, they're so bored. They need they someone. Like nothing to do. Like every store I went into, everyone was just like, I had like seven people helping me at once. Anyway, so I think that must, most people must be shopping online. Like how did yours go? Yeah, they're definitely shopping online. They're all shopping at Fate. <laughs> That's why the shopping centre was so dead. Yeah. Boxing Day used to be the big sale day in Australia. You remember how excited everyone used to get over Boxing Day. Now Black Friday has completely overtaken that and has made um, Boxing Day... Not so exciting anymore. Yeah. Um, 
But in terms of in-store shopping for sales, I definitely think um, like we had an online and in-store sale for 30% off and our stores did really well. But I think that comes down to like us having this really strong online presence. But obviously online is going to do way more than in-store. But I think just because of online shopping and how we're living in this online shopping world, shopping centres in particular are never going to be what they used to be like. Remember when it used to be like midnight or open till 3am, yes. like around just before Christmas? They The centres still do that and it is dead. And so we opened till 10 last year and... In between, honestly, 8 and 10, it was a ghost town. Mm -hmm. And heaps of stores around us just shut early anyway. Like, I think they just don't give a shit. Um, And, like, for example, our Brisbane store at Westwood Chermside, which is a bigger shopping centre, they do have midnight trade this year around Christmas time. Come on, who's shopping at 11.40 p.m. at night? I had to do those midnight trades a couple times. I don't want to be rostering our girls on that late and then they're opening the store the next morning at 9am. Like it's a lot. Everyone's online shopping these days. And I think the late night Christmas trade doesn't work anymore the way that it used to. Like, Remember how exciting it was when we were teenagers? Did you ever go? Well, I was working them though. Like oh, I was no. behind the counter at things like, <laughs> I was at the body shop. I worked at the perfume store. Like I was the one there till midnight. And then when I wasn't there, I was the one doing overnights on Christmas Eve into Christmas Day oh. at McDonald's. Sorry. So you, you can imagine like me clocking in for my shift at 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve, it hitting Christmas Day at midnight. Did you go, Merry Christmas? Yes. Merry Christmas. <laughs> that would have been a bit fun. I even think I did a New Year's Eve once and like that was actually sad. But like <laughs> Christmas Eve was okay and I was the fun crew trainer so yeah. I was dressed as Santa and dressed as Mrs. Claus and things like that. You just like have that. to make fun of it. So all the all the customers loved me and then uh, about 6am I'd clock off and the day crew would come in to do because our McDonald's was open on Christmas day mm-hmm. and so the day crew would come in and I'd go bye everyone and then I'd have to go and do Christmas my day. whole Christmas day with oh. everyone after working all night. Nah. Do the whole Christmas day all the presents all the everything and then I volunteered because you got so much money. It was like double time, triple time, quadruple yep. time working on Christmas Day and then overnight. Yeah. So I was like, I want the money. So I'm doing Christmas Day night as well. So then I'd <laughs> sleep for You're maybe three bendering. hours and <laughs> back I go. <laughs> Mrs. Claus is back, honey. Ho, ho, ho. In we go. The day crew are ruined. I've seen them all again because it was like, you know, this surprises everyone. Every time I would say like, yeah, we're open Christmas Day. People would be like, why is McDonald's open on Christmas Day? Like, that is so strange. It is one of the busiest days of the year because you have to think a lot of people are coming through drive through to get their coffees as they have woken up early for the kids to open their presents. Yep. They need a coffee. Um, they're driving long drives to go see family, so they need a coffee. Mm-hmm. We may as well stop in and get the kids a snack. You also have, this is really random, but um, a lot of parents who have are uh, divorced, use McDonald's as their safe point to swap over the kids. That's where mum and dad used to drop us off. Oh, meet, really? Yeah, like meet at the car park and have a a fight in between <laughs> and fucking <laughs> shove you in the back of the car. <laughs> Go on, get! Yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. and they'd have a f- big blue. Yeah, so a lot of parents who ha- are in that situation, like the, the mum or the dad will bring in the kids and then obviously we have security cameras and things like that. So the mm. swap over happens in the dining room or sometimes even like I saw families who just would bring the kids, the mum would leave and the dad would have lunch at McDonald's with them and then the mum mm. would come and pick them up again. Is it the busiest day for Macca's Christmas Day or do you reckon it's... Oh, McHappy Day McHappy is Day, the busiest yep. day. But Christmas Day doesn't come you know, too far behind it. It's wow. really busy. And I'm sure that's different for each Macca's. But yeah. yeah, I don't know why I'm giving you all the logistics of the Mac. This is why we need a plan, people, because I just go off on all these boring, boring <laughs> So if any of you have ever tangents. wondered what it's like uh, working at McDonald's on a busy day, you now know. And I feel like everyone's been itching to know that. Yeah, Matt. for yeah. sure. I'll let you know. The triple time was worth it. <laughs> You just spoke that whole episode, so I'm <laughs> going to close out the episode. You can go. Thanks for listening, everyone, to mainly Matt talking. <laughs> we try to make things equal around here, but sometimes it gets passionate. Yeah, I know. But I, I know. like I like your conspiracy theories. I'm uh, just conscious that I talk so much, and here I go. Here you, <laughs> you know go I mean? again, talking over wanted, me. I just wanted to explain myself, is that, like, sometimes we record and at the end of the episode I'll go, oh, I spoke a lot today, like... That is so fine. But also, in my defence, sorry, I know I'm still talking. Yeah. But I did ask you at the start whether you had anything to talk about. And I just asked you here for the closer whether you had anything to talk about. And you said, nah. We're just raw dogging it. So, go ahead. I'm busy. You are busy. (laughs) 
Well, we hope you have enjoyed our very first Raw Dog episode. We haven't even given them any news in this one. Like last week it was news. What is this? Conspir- it's a conspiracy episode. But anyway, if you did enjoy and if you like us and you want to hear us again, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you never miss an episode. We upload every single Tuesday. How many episodes has this been now? 14. 14. We're on a roll. Um, and if you haven't already, please rate us five stars and leave us a review. And if you would like to follow us on all social media platforms, please do. For me, just search Brittany Saunders. And for me, search All Right Hey. You can also send us an email. Our email is in the show notes below. Anyway, doll, I better let you go. I'm really busy. 